Hello. Multiplication is hard. And in the age of discovery in the 16th and 17th centuries, when people were navigating around the world, they needed navigation aids. And these were calculated by astronomers who did a great deal of calculation to a very great accuracy. And that involved a lot of multiplication. So the search was on for a quicker way of multiplying. Um, and I don't just mean, you know, grid method or lattice method or what have you, or long multiplication. They're all much the same, really, in terms of how long they take. Um, they were looking for something much better. And the first idea they came up with was prosthephoresis, um, which oddly depends on trigonometry. And so that's why this video about prosthephoresis is in my series on trigonometry's history. So what I'm going to do, um, explain the need for fast multiplication methods, um, explain how prosthoresis works, and then um, prosth prosthephoresis didn't last long. It was overtaken by logarithms within 50 years or so. And so we'll look, have a brief look at how logarithms work, which you probably know anyway. Um, and then I get to put them up against one another and time them, time myself uh, for using these different methods for multiplying numbers and see how they stack up. And I'm going to do that first for four digit numbers because I happen to have the tables here, which um, um, I had at school. And then we'll do it for seven figure logarithms because I've also got a copy of those. So that's the plan. Let me share my screen. There we are, that's my title. So as I say, multiplication is hard. So just how hard is it? Well, if you add two n digit numbers, um, it takes n single, digi single digit additions, or well, plus a little carry, but that's, doesn't, that's pretty cheap. Um, whereas if you multiply two n digit numbers, you've got to do n squared single digit multiplications and then n squared single digit additions as well. Um, or thereabouts, uh, that's pretty expensive. In fact, trying it myself with four digit numbers, it takes me three seconds to add two four digit numbers, but it takes 50 seconds, five zero seconds to multiply two four digit numbers. So it's a great deal more difficult. And as I say, in the age of discovery, um, sailors were going around the world discovering continents and what have you, and they took navigational almanacs with them, which um, and they depended on an enormous amount of very accurate calculation, which was done by astronomers. So astronomers were working to an accuracy of 10 digits or even more. So I had to build up this table of how long these different methods of multiplying take. And the, the first two entry then is it takes me three seconds to add and 50 seconds to multiply using the lattice method um, with four figure, um, four figure numbers. Let's say, how does frost the freezes work? Well, it depends on trigonometry and it depends on that formula, which I'm sure you know, and that one, which is essentially the same formula. Um, and if you add them and divide by two, you get that. So here are two numbers being multiplied uh, with no multiplication on this side, except this multiplied by half, which is very easy. So if you want to multiply two numbers together, what you have to do, First of all, you scale them uh, so that they be lie between 0.1 and 1. That's very uh, trivial. Um, just ignore the decimal point and the sign, really. Um, and uh, so they look like a cosine of something then. So then you make them the cosine of something and look up the arc cos or cos to the minus 1. So you find these angles, if you like, A and B, whose cosines are the numbers we want to multiply. And here we are. We want to multiply those cosines. And here is how we do it. So that's what we have to calculate. Right, so, um, and, oh, and then we rescale. We put the decimal point back, if you like. So if you look at that, this, so we've got trig tables. We've had trig tables since the seventh, second century. Uh, so there were accurate trig tables being used anyway for trig, because a lot of the calculations were trigonometric. Um, and so this calculation involves um, n-digit table lookup. So you look up this quantity and that quantity, oh, and initially that one and that one um, in tables either straight cos tables or cos to the minus one tables. Um, and you then got three n digit addition, additions and one n digit halving, which is pretty much like a, an addition. So um, we'll think of that as four addition-like operations. Um, so that doesn't look like a huge gain over multiplication, which takes n, n, two n squared operations. But for big N, it certainly does begin to look like a serious gain. So what's the history here? So the, those addition formulae go back to the second century or so, and so do trig tables. So, you know, that's, that's ancient. Um, prosthephoresis itself appeared, we think, in the 1580s, though nobody really knows quite who came up with it. 
Amusingly, we do know, though, Tycho Brahe, an astronomer, of course, was an enthusiastic user of it and oddly taught it to King James VI of Scotland in 1589. That's a story um, which we're not going to tell today. Um, but later, James, we don't know whether James VI was terribly interested in this, but his physician was. And he later taught it to his pal John Napier, which then led him, that is John Napier, to develop logarithms. So prosthesis didn't last that long. Um, it, was, it had about a 50 year heyday and then it disappeared um, under logarithms. So how do logarithms work? Well, I'm sure you know this formula too. Um, here we're using log to mean log to base 10 because that's what the tables do. Um, so to multiply x by y, um, you look up the log of each, you add those, and then you look up what's called the anti-log which is really 10 to the something, and that's your answer. So that requires only three lookups and one addition. So that's a lot quicker than prosthesis. So prosthesis basically didn't last once this had been invented. The history here is, so it was John Napier famously who first published some logarithms in 1614. So that's some time after he, f he found out about prosthesis, I think. So he took quite a long time to work this out. Um, and then J Henry Briggs, an English mathematician, uh, John Napier, of course, was Scottish, um, and uh, published the first base 10, what we would call base 10 logarithms in 1617, and they swept the world, really. Um, so neither of them quite knew what they were doing, actually, um, because they didn't have the concept of fractional powers, a sort of 10 to the half type thing. Um, that didn't appear till somewhere later. So they invented these logarithms um, without, as it were, really knowing what they invented, which is quite surprising, really. Um, anyway, so we've got three ways to multiply. Um, ordinary pencil paper methods. I'm going to use lattice multiplication because uh, or a slight variant of it, which for me, I think is the quickest. Um, you may find a different method quicker, but they're all much the same, really. Um, and, and prosthesis and logarithm. My plan is then to show you in some detail how that actually works in the four figure case. So you get a feeling for the amount of work involved. And then I'm going to show you some timings of how long they actually take for me. Um, and we'll compare the methods. OK, so multiplication, lattice method I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to use that because it seems turns or a variant of it, um, which turns out uh, I find is the quickest. But let's um, let me show you how this works in case you don't know it. So the standard way of doing lattice multiplication, I'm going to multiply 2, 4, 6, 8 oops, by 9, 7, 5, 3. That's the way we lay out this. Um... Oh, incidentally, if you want to try this yourself, this um, these sorts of paper with one diagonal line, you can find on quilting websites. It's quite cute, isn't it? Anyway, so what we do is we multiply by nine first. We multiply this whole digit by number by nine, and we write it like this: one eight nine four is a thirty six, nine six is a fifty four, nine eight is a seventy two, and then we do the sevens, and we get fourteen twenty eight forty two. 56. Um, and so you can see what's going to happen. We're going to add up down these diagonals because this, as it were, is the units digit, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands. Um, we can only expect four figure answers, four figure accuracy. There's not much point. So this is the last one that's really going to count. And so um, we're not going to uh, get make much sense out of these ones here. So we're not going to calculate them. And then and then we do the five row and we get 10. 20, 30, 40, I'm not going to bother with a zero. Um, and then the three row is 6, 12, 18, I'm going to round to 2. OK, and then we add down a diagonal and to get the answer. So here we get, uh, um, what we get is a 4, um, which I'll put here. Uh, with a carry of one. It really, this diagonal business does get jolly awkward. And frankly, I'm not going to keep going because it's too hard. Uh, I keep making mistakes doing that. So I'm going to show you, I, I don't know whether this is actually my own invention, but I haven't seen anybody else do this. Um, what I'm going to call straightened up lattice multiplication, which looks superficially a bit more like long multiplication. So how does that work? So I'm going to do two, four, six, eight by nine, seven, five, three. And again, I'm going to start by multiplying by the nine. But what I'm going to do now, I've got ordinary squared paper here. I'm going to do 18 like that. 
and nine fours are 36. Nine sixes, um, not on nine sixes, 54. I'm trying to talk and do math, but do arithmetic at the same time. It does slow me down rather, I have to confirm. 72, okay, there we go. Um, and, and then we're going to do the seven ones and we write it here. So it goes 14, 28, um, seven sixes are 42, um, 56. OK, and so now you can see what's going to happen um, is we're going to end up adding down columns. And that's much easier, I have to say. And also, we don't need any of this rubbish. So and I'm just going to round in this column. So now and now we do the five row and we get um, 10, 20, 30, whoops, 30, and a 40. And then finally, the three row and we get um, 0, 6 to 6, 3, it's a 12. Um, three six is at 18 around that to two now if i put some lines in to make make it all a little bit clearer what i'm up to so um now i've got to add up down the columns and so we get a four there don't we with the carry one so this little one is a bit awkward but not terribly um and so then we actually get um zero carry two and and this is relatively straightforward isn't it so this is um seven carry two um this is uh, zero carry four i hope i'm getting this right um and then this is a four and a two so that's your answer two seven two four oh seven basically um right so that's that method so now let's see how um logarithms work so this is a table from the log tables this is actually the whole thing the whole log table for every number um so um you can look up four figure accuracy any four figure number this way um so let's look at that in a bit more detail suppose we want to work out as we do the log of two four six eight um we're not worried about decimal points in all this we can sit that later so two four six eight we look so we look at the two four here and the six here so our first shot is three nine three 909 uh, 2468 so now these things are called proportional parts and we want to add the corresponding part for eight. so these things are pretty nearly linear at this scale so we want to add 14 uh, to that and we'll get um 39 um 3923 won't we 3923 so that's how looking up logarithms works and there's also a table of anti-logarithms which look essentially the same so let's do a log multiplication we're starting with two, four, six, eight, and nine, seven, five, three. So we look up the logs. We see in the log of this one is three, nine, two, three. The log of this one turns out to be nine, eight, nine, one. That's a three. And then we add these up and we get a uh, four, one, eight, um, three, one. Um, and then we look up. The empty log and we get two four oh seven so that's a lot quicker isn't it Very much quicker okay now then prosthesis hmm. this is quite complicated too in fact it's the most complicated of the methods um right so it relies on a, a table of cosines now these tables work in degrees and minutes um, but it's the same sort of thing you look up the degrees and uh, minutes to the nearest six minutes along here and then you add the extra minute there um, the slight complication with cosines of course cosine is a decreasing function so these numbers are going down not up um, and also there isn't a sort of anti-cosine table so you have to look at the cosines up in the um, in the cosine table so let's try and do that so we're going to find 2468 in the table so Here's 2470, which is close. So that looks like 75 degrees and 42 minutes. We want to go a little bit further this way, don't we? Because cosine is decreasing. Um, and one minute further would take us to um, 2467. Uh, that's, that's the best we can do. So we end up with 75 degrees and 43 minutes. OK, so now let's do this business. So again, we start with uh, two, four, six, eight, and 
9753. So we look these up in the cosine table backwards, and this one is we've seen 75 degrees, this is degrees and this is minutes, um, 43. This one turns out to be uh, 12 degrees and 46 minutes. And then we have to both add them and subtract them. So we add them, and this isn't all that easy, but we get a nine. You have to be used to sexagesimal arithmetic here. Um, so we've got to add two eights, and that's two carry one in sexagesimal, isn't it? Because that's 80 degrees. So there's a one to carry here, and, and then we get an eight and another eight. So that's the addition. Then we have to subtract them, and then we get a seven, and we get five here, and two and six. Then we have to um, look up cosines of each of them. And so for this one, we get 0265. And, for the, and this is now a decimal number, of course. And here we get 4548. Then we have to add them. And that comes up as um, 318. Four. And finally, we have to divide by two and get two, four, oh, seven, if you like. It's the number we got the other times too. It's pretty hard work, isn't it? It's complicated. It's much more complicated than the others, uh, but it's not as much hard, actual work as those. So now let's have a look at some. Um, let me go back to my. Here we are. So the way we're going to build up a story here is that um, I'm not rather than measuring every single process I do, I'm going to build up the the um, processes from some atomic timings. So I reckon it takes me I've said it takes me three seconds to do an addition and 50 seconds to do the lattice method multiplication when I'm not trying to talk and make a video at the same time. Um, so um, and a table lookup I reckon takes 13 seconds. I'm going to assume they're all much the same. They're, they're not quite, but that'll do. Right. So prosthephoresis then takes four lookups and four additions. So that's 16 times four is 64. Logarithms takes um, three lookups and one addition. So that's 42. So prosthesis is nowhere near competing with just doing the multiplication when it's only four figures long. Logarithms is, but not by much. It's, you know, you, you wouldn't spend a lifetime trying to prevent, f trying to invent fast multiplication if that was all you were going to achieve. Um, but there's more to it than that. So what about division? So for the lattice method, um, long division is even longer than long multiplication. And nobody in their right minds would do that to, to um, uh, divide two four-figure numbers. What you do is an idea going back to the Babylonians, which you look up the reciprocal of the number you want to divide by, and you can then multiply it. So the table has a table. Uh, my book has a table of reciprocals as well that works just the same as the others. Uh, so to die, you just need to one table look up the... Um, and then you do the multiplication. I'm sure that method has been, it well, it's been used since the Babylonian times. Um, division actually is just as easy using logarithms because here log of x, y is log x minus log y. So it's just the same, except you subtract. So division is exactly the same as multiplication in terms of the amount of work involved. Interestingly, so is prosthephoresis. Uh, remember, that's the basic formula for prosthephoresis. If I write that as that, that's quite clever, isn't it? So now we're dividing by something. So if we want to divide by something, we look it up in an inverse secant table rather than a cos table. And there, so it's just the same then. So uh, the lattice method has suffered a bit for mark division because you've got to um, you've got to do an extra look up. Prosthephoresis and logarithms are the same. So logarithms is still the standout winner, but actually prosthephoresis is getting is getting competitive. But remember, who were these guys? They were astronomers. And what calculations were they actually making to high accuracy? And the answer is spherical trigonometry. Now, I haven't covered spherical trigonometry yet in this series. That'll probably be next. But here are some typical formula from trig um, spherical trigonometry. All these A's and B's and C's are angles. So what you're largely doing in your multiplying is multiplying two um, trigonometric ratios. Now then, Let's go back and look, see what that means. So um, there are similar ratios here, similar prosthephoresis formula for all these things. So now, if you want to multiply two trig ratios, you don't have to do those first two lookups. If you want to multiply sine A by sine B when you know A and B, 
well, you don't need to look, you need, don't need to find out what A and B are by taking an inverse sign, you just know them. So you can go straight to this side. So actually, there are two fewer table lookups when you multiply cos A times cos B, uh, or sine A times sine B, than there are when you multiply A by B. For logarithms, it's no harder, it's not actually easier, but um, because tables um, were produced of log cosines, so if you want to look up the, the, the log of the cosine of something, that's one table lookup, not two. Um, so let's look at the timing now. So now lattice method has gone worse again, because of course you have got to look up two cosines now, um, as well as doing the multiplication. So that's got really quite hard. Prosthesis has got dramatically easier. So now it's always twice as quick as lattice method. Um, logarithms are still the same. Log Prosthesis actually beats logarithms. So that's interesting, isn't it? Um, so there's a hint there that prosthesis really does have a role for astronomers at any rate, if not for other physical scientists. Right, so let's do it in seven figures. Um, I'm not going to do the whole palaver here, but uh, se seven figure logarithms are a bit different. Of course, they're much bigger. You've seen here this book. It's quite a substantial book. Um, and this is just one double page opening of 90 or two pages of, eight, of 180. So you have to find what you're looking for. So you can see here that you essentially look up the first five digits of your seven digit question um, along here and here. And then you have to look up the last two in the proportional path. This thing is by is because we zoomed in so far, this thing is so nearly linear that the difference between one entry and the next is either 59 or 58 in the last digit on every single entry. Um, so you look up um, the first five digits here and then um, you look up the uh, the last two here. So the way that works, suppose your last digits are uh, four, six, for example, the overall um, the difference between one entry and the next is 59. So four in the sixth place is worth 24 and six in the last place is worth a tenth of that, which is three or four, whichever you prefer. So that's how the seven figure logarithms work. And now let's look at the timings. So the basic things I'm looking up here, I reckon it takes 30 seconds to look something up. It's a lot harder. You've got to find the right page for starters. Um, addition is still basically trivial, so it's seven seconds. The lattice method, I reckon, takes me 180 seconds with seven digit figures. You know, it's three minutes. It's hard work. So logarithms being three lookups and addition um, is 97, and prosthesis is four of each of those, which I make 148. Um, so actually, even prosthesis at seven figures long and just for multiplying numbers is a little bit quicker than the lattice method. Um, and therefore, I think quicker than any method of multiplying without using some special fancy algorithm. Division again, of course, it, it wins again because it's no easier, no harder than uh, multiplying. Whereas for lattice method, it's getting harder again. And of course, when you're multiplying two trig ratios, um, it's, it's a huge win. So I think this is really why um, prosthesis took off. It certainly did. When you're multiplying trig ratios to great accuracy, it's a huge win over um over lattice methods provided of course you've got the right tables and what i am afraid i don't know um, i do know that people had much more accurate tables i don't really know how um how what they looked like and how they worked so i can't really do any sort of timings for those so four and seven figures is the best i get so anyway there we are there's prosthesis hope you enjoyed it <laughs>